Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to my video on how to answer summary completion questions. This type of question appears regularly in the IELTS reading test, so it's important that you have a strategy for answering it. This video covers all you need to know, including an explanation of summary completion questions, the skills needed, key tips, a proven strategy for answering them and an example from a real IELTS test paper with step-by-step -step instructions. First, I want to be sure that you understand what a summary is. A summary is a short, clear description that gives the main facts or ideas about something. In this case, it's a short summary of information from part of the text that's been set for your reading test. For summary completion questions, you will be given the text and a summary of a section of the text with some gaps where words have been missed out. You may also be given a list of words to fill the gaps with. You will be required to do one of the following tasks. Fill in the gaps with words from a word list or fill in the gaps with words from the text. On this slide and the next are two sets of instructions from past test papers to illustrate the two different forms of summary completion questions. In this example, you have to select the missing words from a list of words included in the instructions. Note that there are more words in the list than are needed to fill the gaps. In this example, on the other hand, you're required to select the missing words from the text. Summary completion questions are designed to test a range of reading skills. They test your ability to skim the summary for general meaning, scan the text for specific information, identify key words, recognize synonyms and paraphrasing, and use context to make predictions. Now for some key tips. Tip 1. Summary completion questions are all about vocabulary. You need to be able to recognise a wide range of synonyms and also of paraphrasing to score highly. Tip 2. The answers are usually in the same order in the text as the order of the missing words. On the rare occasions that they aren't, the key words will help you to easily spot this. Tip 3. Take careful note of how many words you should write for your answer. For example, no more than two words. If you write more than this, your answer will be marked wrong, even if the information is correct. Tip 4. In questions where you select words from a word list, there will be more words in the list than there are gaps in the summary to fill in, so you won't need them all. Your task is to select the correct ones. There will probably be some words in the list that you can eliminate immediately as clearly being incorrect. This could be because of their meaning or their grammatical form. Cross them through in pencil so you don't waste time considering them. Tip 5. When you read the summary, try to predict the type of word you'll need to fill each gap from the context of the sentence. Is it an adjective, a noun or a verb, for example? Doing this will make it easy to spot the correct word because you'll have a big clue as to what you're looking for. Tip 6. If you are able to predict the word form, for example an adjective, look for the adjective closest to the key word in the text. This will probably be the word you need or a synonym of it. I'll illustrate this when we come to the example exercise. Tip 7. If you're struggling to find a specific missing word, take an educated guess and move on. It's not worth losing too much time on it. Focus on getting the easier marks and come back to it later if you have time. Tip 8. When you've entered your answer, check the sentence to ensure that it's grammatically correct. If it isn't, your answer is wrong. Tip 9. 
you don't need to read the whole text in detail, just the part that is summarised. We're now ready to look at my step-by-step -step strategy. I'll show you how to apply this when we work through the sample question, but first you need to understand it. Start by carefully reading the instructions, taking particular note of where you should get the missing words from, a word list or the text. If it's the text, note the word limit for your answer. For example, no more than two words. Then, skim read the summary to get a general understanding of what it's about. Next, read the summary in more detail and try to predict the type of word needed to fill each gap, such as a verb, a noun or an adjective. And try and guess what that word might be. Don't spend too long on this, but it will save you time later if you do it. If the question includes a list of words, see if you can guess any answers. You may be able to narrow it down to two or three words. There will be other words that are obviously wrong. The summary will normally relate to one section of the text, probably two to three paragraphs. Your next job is to identify this. Pick out a few key words from the summary to scan for. Names, numbers, places and dates are ideal if there are any, as these will be easy to spot. Remember that synonyms could be used. When you've made your selection, scan for them. Now read the first sentence of the summary with a gap in it. Try to work out what form of word will fit, such as an adjective the past tense of a verb, or a noun. You may even be able to dict the missing word itself, or a synonym. Identify one or two key words and scan the section of text for them, watching out for synonyms and paraphrasing. When you've found the part of the text with the answer in, read it in detail to identify the word you need, either in the text itself or from the word list. Don't forget to check your answers to ensure that the sentence is grammatically correct. Repeat this process for the rest of the missing words. Now for our practice question. This question is from a past IELTS reading test paper. You can see the text on the next slide. To make it easier for you to work on them, you can download them as a PDF. The link is in the notes below this video. This text is just a small portion of the whole text used in the real exam paper. It's only the part that has been summarised. In your exam, you'll be working on a much longer text. So this is how I'd answer the question. First, I read the instructions and identify that this is a summary completion question where I have to find the missing words in the text rather than from a word list. I note that I must choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer. I then select a few words in the summary to scan the full text for, in order to identify the section that's been summarised. I choose do-it-yourself and lawyers, as these are key topics in the summary. Once I've found the right section of text, I get straight down to locating the first missing word. On reading the first sentence in the summary, I can tell that the missing word will be a noun because it's going to be a type of feeling. From the context of the sentence, I can even make an educated guess as to what the missing word is. I know that my own feeling of trying to put together do-it-yourself products is often frustration. I select do-it-yourself products as the key word phrase to scan the text for. I find it in the very first sentence. I then read the whole sentence in detail and confirm that the answer is indeed frustration. I fill in the answer and before moving on, read the sentence to double check that it's grammatically correct. The second answer comes in the same sentence in the summary as the first. I reread the sentence and choose key words in the final phrase to help me locate the matching information. I select not tested 
as this is the main idea. I also know that I'm looking for another noun, as the missing word has an article in front of it, the word A. I scan on through the text and find the word test in the next sentence. I read the sentence in detail to check if the information matches. It does. There is paraphrasing, but the phrase few companies seem to test their instructions means the same as have not been tested by companies. I now just need to find the words that tell me who the product has not been tested on. I easily identify this to be first time users. I have my second answer. On reading the summary sentence containing the third missing word, I can see that this missing word comes before a noun and is going to be an adjective describing the noun information. I take information as my key word, but I'm also mindful that a synonym might appear in the text. I scan the text. The text setter has been kind and information is in the next sentence, which reads Often, essential information is omitted, steps in the construction process are taken for granted, and some degree of special knowledge is assumed. The answer is obviously going to be the adjective associated with the word information, which comes before it. It's essential. Well, that's the third answer found. The next gap is in the second half of the same sentence. Because of this, I guess that the answer might be in the same sentence in the text as the last one. So I go back to the text and read it carefully, looking out for any words that match those in the summary sentence or are synonyms of them. I choose assumptions and consumer as key words to particularly watch out for. I spot the word assumed, so know that I'm in the right place in the text. The sentence is paraphrased, but even if I wasn't sure exactly what it meant, it's clear that it's special knowledge that's related to the key word assumed. This then is the answer. We now come to the final missing word. It occurs in the middle of a long sentence. I'm not sure that I really understand what it's about and how it's related to the main topic of the summary, which makes me feel quite anxious about being able to find the answer. If you ever feel like this, don't panic. Just stick to the strategy and you'll be fine. I select my keywords as before. I think that documents, language and courts are the best ones to scan for. I scan for them and soon identify the sentence containing the answer. But there's more work to be done to find the word or words I need. I've also noticed that the word ambiguity appears in both the text and the summary. And that the phrases for a long time and over the centuries match. Neither, however, provide the answer. So I must dig deeper. What I need to do is focus on the words in the summary that specifically relate to the missing word. They come immediately before it and are to lose faith in. I go back to the text and read carefully to try and spot a word or phrase with a similar meaning. There's nothing obvious, but I know that the word confidence in is a synonym of faith in, so I make an educated guess that the answer will be here. The next two words are legal formulations. I don't know what this means, but it would seem to fit the context of the sentence and it sounds grammatically correct. So, without wasting more time, I put it as my answer. So, that's the whole question now complete. I hope you found this strategy helpful. Now use what you've learnt to practice answering other summary completing questions and you'll soon become good at them. You'll find lots more help with the IELTS reading test, including strategies for answering the other types of reading questions, in my other videos and on my website ieltsjackie.com. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.